Alright, so we're in the strange church's office. Move the painting? Yes. Okay, so there's a hole. I'm assuming the door's locked? Yeah. Okay. Man, these guys don't move jack shit. I swear, every time there's something, it's just like, oh, well, you know, maybe there's just a little bit of a hole here. Oh, ooh, you're new. Hi, who are you? I know you. You're Nightingale from around 1892, right? Don't be surprised. I know just about everything about the room. I've been dead since 1874, so I've had a lot of time to study it. Being trapped here for decades has made my world quite small. I'm Priscilla Monston. I'm sure you've met my brother Peter. Oh, I yeah. You kind of look like her, I guess. First witch has trapped us both here, accusing us of being in league with Robert Blackett. Unfortunately, I've never been able to use magic in the dream. I suppose I lack a certain suspension of disbelief necessary for it. You, however, could be... Uh, you, however, could defeat the first witch and get us both out of here. I know you are quite talented. Here's a St. Ellie's key, and you can use it to escape and face the first witch. Before you go, if you have any questions about the dream, or even your own future, I will answer them. Okay, what about the dream? Thousands of years ago, a primitive society either created or discovered the idol. I'm not sure which. Each new moon, anything the idol's eyes had seen would be incorporated into a new dream. As was customary in the ancient days, blood sacrifices were regularly made to the idol. Being one of the idol's formative experiences, I believe these sacrifices explain the power blood holds in the dream. The idol was lost for some time and rediscovered in old Byzantium. There it served in an imaginary pleasure house, an arena for the rich and noble. The remnants of that era can still be found beneath Monston House. Much later, as you know, my brother purchased the idol and brought it back to Monston House. I later discovered that all these old iterations occupied physical space in the dream and still existed. Curiously, though, they are all devoid of life. Though careful application of electromagnetic stimulation to idols in the dream, I uncovered the iterations that could be restarted. You are a product of those experiments. In 1892, version 4, Nightingale, that was brought back to life. You came here in 1816 via a cable car, right? I gave the schematics to Robert. He had built it in the real world and shown it to the idol. We used to have cable cars running to every iteration of the dream. Robert had one of the witches use some sort of magic to create copies of the cable cars and tunnels to speed up the work. The undead were brought here en masse via the cable cars and used as a copious source of organ grease. Ultimately, Robert found some other way to get organ grease, but he wouldn't tell me. Since many iterations of the dream we were harvesting were uh, from were no longer necessary, I detached the electromagnetic stimulation device from all the idols we collected from each iteration. One by one, each iteration went dark and the tunnels and cable cars were dismantled. Curiously, there was a single missing idol, the one from iteration 1892 version 4. Furthermore, 1892-4 tunnel entrance had disappeared. I suppose now that you are here, we know it's still running. Okay, it's because it was sealed off. Interesting. Nightingale. This may be hard to hear. You are the dream's interpretation of Nightingale from when she first came to Monson House in 1892. Later, you showed exceptional talent as a witch and rapidly became Robert Blackett's assistant. Unfortunately, Robert has a tendency to break his favorite toys. Due to your frequent exposure to the dream, your body in the real world entered into a coma. I'm not sure if you still live, but it's entirely possible. You would be nearly 40 years of age. In the dream, you disappeared along with a half a dozen other girls. I suspect you were taken by Robert to his new paradise and likely still serve him. Ew. What, in the fucking Epstein Island? You were to somehow wake from your coma. I'm not exactly sure whose conscious experience would be embodied. I do hope it's the Nightingale I'm speaking to now, as later iterations are significantly less pleasant. Robert Blackett is a sick man. Okay. Well, I need to put my Bible back on. I need, I need my Bible, buddy. First witch is taking up residence in the main chapel of St. Ellie. She seemed to have lost her mind, but I bet the, uh, the weight of the bloody tower is to her. Right, so we're on chapter four now. So... We're in the foyer again. Alright, we're 
gonna have to fight her again, or? Creature feasts upon the first witch. A small door lies behind them. Gotta pass the creature? No. Little door has no handle. Well, maybe I should step past. I doubt many anything else in the dream has really changed, minus what's happened. So let's just let's uh, inspect it, just so in case whatever the fuck's going on here, and you know, East Nightingale. Oh, is that supposed to be me? I didn't pose much of a threat, so. Black at Halski. Oh, that's perfect. That's what we were looking for. Oh, hey, you're in here. You want me to join you? Need more info. If you need an experience soldier, I'll join you for a price. I get half of any gold coins you find. Carry three first aid kits, plenty of ammo, so I won't be dying on you too quickly. Though he's dead, the Wretch King spell still binds me on the mansion grounds. If that arrangement is minimal, just contact me any night you need help. Okay. Oh, I like cut my HP in half. Oh, okay. I wonder why. Oh, who are you? Oh dear, Nightingale, is that you? You look so normal. Suppose you must have defeated the beastly version of yourself and got her key. My name is Ledet, uh, Ledai? Liddy? Liddy? I'm gonna go with Liddy. The, ca the catatonic lump on the couch of my sister, Letty. You never have come here. There's nothing but madness and horror in this house. Do you feel weak? Like you've withered away from the inside? That's the effect this house has. It greatly diminishes your vitality and curse tolerance as long as you're inside it. I still wish to leave and go see the Cagewood Circus. Sometimes I can hear the music, but I can't go without Letty. Robert Blackett gave us some sort of sleeping medication while he performed surgeries on us. He used waking powder after to wake us up, but Letty never got any. Since you're here, maybe you can find some waking powder? I expect you can find some in the laboratory upstairs. I'm too weak to venture up there, though. I'll reward you with something precious. Need any supplies? I have a few things here I could provide at a cost. Okay. Nothing that I really need. The house is wired for electricity. There's a large machine outside for converting organ grease into electricity, but it's missing an electrical generator. Heard it was a machine created by Priscilla Monson, but that can't be right. Hasn't Priscilla Monson been missing for years? Now there's a spare electrical generator somewhere in Blackett House. Oh, here. Alternatively, if Priscilla Monson rumor is true, perhaps you could ask her for one. Never trusted Robert Blackett. I begged my parents to take Letty and I back home. We had been kicked out of school for misbehaving, and they refused to let us come home until we had been cured. We saw Robert less and less, which was a relief. But then girls started to disappear in the dream. We found out soon enough where they had been taken. Robert burst into our room and drugged Letty and I. We didn't wake up until after our surgeries had already been completed. Robert Blackett is obsessed with horses. I caught him drawing them on multiple occasions. Notice how excited he got around Mary Lynn, uh, Lude? Or Larry Wind? Mari, Mari Lund? I don't know. That's a fucking weird name. He made us all try on these horse skulls and started. I think he could no longer control himself. He wanted to turn us into horses. In a dream, it is difficult to make permanent changes to the body. He used all kinds of tricks, including having the idol look at our real bodies through a funhouse mirror's reflection. Lady and I got along with countless other girls, and their iterations were Robert's failures. Our faces were mangled, our spirits are broken, and most of us are absolutely mad. He did finally find a method that works, the bestial iteration of you that was his prized creation. Once he has succeeded, he abandons us here and locked the door behind him. Okay. What in the fuck? I think it's bugged, kind of. It's... <laughs> it was... That was something. Okay. Found the waking powder. What? 
Landing Gale from 1892. We are the Central Station's logistics machine. We have been waiting for someone, anyone. We have a request. We have no purpose anymore. You must destroy us. Priscilla Monston wished to create a thinking machine. She harvested the heads from three Priscilla Monstons from different iterations. Heads were not given willingly. Pipes were placed into each prefrontal cortex. Portions of the limbic system were excised, limiting unnecessary emotion. Treated organ fluid allows for communication between each head. Primary function has been to oversee the operations of the central station. Central station was created to facilitate organ harvesting on a mass scale. The cable cars connected each nearby iteration of Monston House. At the start of each night, a brand of hunters was dispatched to each iteration. The band consisted primarily of initiates, Robert's experiments, and big wretches. They would execute all residents of the iteration and return with their organs. The organs were then processed here, and resulting organ grease was used for infrastructure projects. I will coordinate this activity, assuring maximum efficiency. Ah, fuck. I accidentally clicked it again. The organ grease we acquired was primarily used in the construction of a grand tower. We were never allowed to know any details of the project. Presumably, the construction of the tower was completed. Central station was, without warning to us, shut down abruptly. The primary entrance has been demolished. Cable cars have been destroyed. Since then, we have been without purpose. This is why we wish you to help us. Wish to no longer exist. It appears you have the erasure ritual. You also need the necessary ingredients for the three separate erasure ritual invocations. That is six vials of organ grease and three warding candles. If you erase us, we will leave several valuable items for you. Thank you. Farewell, Nightingale. Oh, I need a, I need a, I need to bring what's her face's toy all the way down here. Hello? This is the concierge. You are tall. Oh my, you're the original Nightingale, aren't you? I'm Peter the Clerk. I used to be Peter Monson. Well, one of the Peter Monsons. I'm not sure which vintage. But Dr. Blackett was kind enough to erase all those unpleasant memories. Now I'm fulfilling a new life here at the elegant blood tower. Well, it used to be elegant. Some absolute madmen open all the jail cells on the farm. Now it's completely bedlam madness and murder. Surely you have the talent to put the end to this. Please take this hotel elevator key. It'll grant elevator access to the upper floors. You have to find Dr. Blackett. He'll know what to do. Check the bass on the first floor first. Godspeed, Nightingale. If you haven't heard, the stars of the dream are actually older iterations of the dream. There's loads of copies of each person exposed to the dream. Those iterations were all dormant and lifeless, but Robert Blackett, with his fantastic intellect, devised a way to electromagnetically stimulate them all back to life. For a while, he had great operation going, where the dormant iterations were used as hunting grounds. Blood and organs were transported by cable car as raw materials for the fledgling blood tower. He also brought back a bunch of us Peter Monstons. We have been trained as servants for the Blood Tower, and what an absolute joy it is to serve. One construction of the farm was completed, the old iterations were no longer needed, but since we Peter Monstons were magically rebound here, we can live our days in the Blood Tower. Oh, you snuck up through the farm, did you? Isn't it marvelous? Dr. Robert Blackett is a true genius. Each cell holds one of the undead from a previous iteration of the dream. The ceiling is covered in spikes can be mechanically lowered. They wake up each night and are crushed beneath the spikes. The floor of the cell is a grate that leads directly to a blood and organ resort beneath the blood tower. The blood and organs fall through the grates to power the blood tower. I think people used to manually har uh, harvest blood and organs in the dream. Blood tower being coated in blood tends to be more static than the rest of the dream. Unless magically bound, residents wake up right where they went to sleep. Unfortunately, someone undid the magical bindings in the farm and opened all the cell doors. The undead have murdered all the guests, and each night the guests rise from the floor just to be murdered again. Who could have done this? I initially suspected Priscilla Monston and my treacherous sister. But she has been locked up in the church and furthermore has no magical ability. Might have been a witch, but the wretch king has taken care of them. If there are any Margaret Blackets left in the dream, I suspect her. He was always getting in Robert's way. But she has not visited the dream in a long time, and the iterations where she was present are all dormant. But you proof there's at least one old iteration still running. Gah, enough prattle. Please, you've got to fix this. Find Robert. Alright. Dear patron, pleasures beyond imagination await. Once details of the transaction are confirmed, you'll be escorted into the receiving room. There, help yourself to a drink and relax on a bed. You will join us shortly, the sanguine madam. Ooh. Icy. Oh, idols! 
Give. That's Robert. I don't want to talk to him yet. Oh, serpent hard, hid within a flowering face. Did ever a dragon keep so fair a cave? Betrayed by my own daughter, Margaret released the wretched masses to overrun the tower. But she didn't do it alone, did she? No, you destroyed my guardian angel. My nightingale could have put a stop to this. But I do not blame you. You are but a simulacrum, a remnant of an older iteration of the dream. How could you appreciate something so fantastic as this tower? I'll give you one chance. Leave this tower and never return. You going to attack me? Yes. I'm grateful urgent. You shouldn't even exist, should you? The iteration of the dream was like a burnt out candle. Yet here you are. Um Priscilla? Yep. Hello, Robert. It's your old friend Priscilla, remember me? One you imprisoned in the church, the one whose work you stole? Thank you, Nightingale, for clearing the path here. Even with this mechanical attire, I was not strong enough to breach Robert's defenses. Truly, I underestimate Robert. He was such a good puppet most of the time. He executed my idea so faithfully for so long. Yeah, I figured. Teaching the dream about magic, about corpses, the use of organ grease to tower, all of my ideas. But no matter, no one will take what is mine from me again. I've been in the dream longer than any of you. I was here first. This is my kingdom. Now I just need to take care of Margaret, and the tower will be free of blackets. Oh, and you. Then the tower will be free of witches as well. Excuse you, lady. You need to... Nightingale, don't end it. Well, fuck you, Priscilla Monston. Thank you for doing what none of us had the strength to do. My father was sick, and clearly Priscilla had gone mad for me in the dream for so long. It's time for the dream to end. I salvaged Peter's spell for disabling an idol. With the idols all gathered in one place, we can disable them all. We can end the dream forever. Can't promise the real world will be pleasant, but it will be real with no one dead. Nanny Gale, if you destroy the dream, all of us who are no longer alive in the real world are finished. What about you? You'll be nearly 40 years old if you're alive at all. There's a different path. Become our queen. Reshape the dream to something better. You can bring everyone from 1892 iteration here. You make Peter's original fantasy of the dream is a paradise, a reality. Nanny Gale, you have a choice to make. Take as much time as you need. Finish any remaining business you had in the dream. Come talk to us when you've made up your mind. Well, I found all the idols now. I don't think the basement had uh, a mirror, did it? No. Uh, it was the lobby? Now I should be able to go talk to the lady again because I did find all the, um... All the idols. You have done it. With all the instruments and unrestricted access to the idols, there remains but one last task. Oh shit, I clicked it too fast. The nurturing and growing one here in the Kolora Clinic. There's an iteration of Robert Black in prison upstairs. Take this Kolora Clinic cage key and unlock his cage. Carve the idol tainted heart from his chest and return it to me. Ah, uh, so the witch has sent you to collect my heart. She said this day would come. I've been preparing. You may think me easy prey given my age. Well, she make me more than a match for you. 
Perhaps I'll take your heart instead. I doubt it, brother. I'm gonna just shank your kneecap until you die. Yes, bring the world into the dream. I'll repair the ritual one moment. Chapter 4. Complete the fourth chapter. Epilogue. London, 1916. In a dream. The Night Mother Disciple. Dawns the whole world of the earth into the dream. Nightingale is brought to London. Isn't it grand? Westminster Palace, Big Ben, here in the dream, the entire world in the dream. Look at them going about their business. They think it's the normal night. No one yet realize this is the night that never ends. They are immortal. That life will never again return to the way it was. We have much work to do. I must be taught about the Night Mother and the gift they have been given. But for now, just for a moment, let's enjoy the view. Okay, I guess that's one of the endings. That was ending C. Okay. We have space to be in stairwell, 1892. In a dream, as Nanny Gale makes her choice, a curious pair of eyes open in a forgotten corner of Monster House. Oh, the hole in the wall! So hasty, she barely even considered the possibility. So flippant, the fan of two universes in his hands really deserves another. There is yet time to slake the great beast's thirst, but not much. The clock is near midnight already. Chapter 1 Onston House. Alright. Pain of the flame subside and ending it loses consciousness, but wakes in. Oh, I got rid of everything except what was uh remembered. Oh, or permanent. Ooh, okay, that's spicy. So this is a fresh start. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Alright, so ending B this time around. So we're going to become the queen of the dream. We're going to perpetuate the misery of the dream. We must free ourselves from it. Do this. You really want to become the queen this one game? Yeah. Oh, you've made the right decision. I'll take care of the king. Don't you worry. Coronation is nigh. Epilogue. Throne room, 1916. In a dream. Last or Robert Blackett's puppets are eradicated from the dream. Then Gale sits as queen. <clears throat> now we properly established you as queen, your subjects will have some questions. Once you finish speaking with them, come see me. Finally brought all the sane ones from 1892 here. Getting the old hag from nowhere was not easy. There's one refugee whose fate is unclear, however. The 1982 Robert Black is currently rotting in a cage in storage. Uh, we want to destroy him. Robert Black is a bad person. Nightingale, you look lovely. Unfortunately, I've been unable to restart any of the previous iterations. Priscilla's mechanical skills far outstrip mine. I, however, had some luck turning the big wretches over to our side. I think they could be useful to us. Uh, yeah, no, we could use them. Hey, 
Hey Felix, quite a shock to find a copy of myself rotting in mad in the Black Tower, but thanks for helping me from the Mad Butcher's surgeon, we got them cleaned up. Together we hunted up a truly amazing quality of organ green. And thinking it, it might be convenient to get the farm and the Blood Tower up and running again. It's a bit grotesque to have all those undead trapped in cells being periodically squished. Can't deny the effectiveness. Do we reopen the farm? Yes. I'm not Gail, so good to see you again. I've been talking with my 1916 twin out in the ruins. She's the leader of a bunch of rogues and thieves that call themselves the Merry Band. I keep telling her to come here, but she's quite untrusty. What should we do? I already caught one of them sneaking around the infirmary. Should we force the Merry Band to disband? Nah. Let them do their thing. They're, they're harmless. They're just a bunch of nerds. Looks like you talked to everyone. I'll give you a tour of the basement. We successfully drained it. On the way, we can take a look at the hallway renovations. We're getting okay. This place will return to its horror glory in no time. All right. So we're gonna go with Margaret's ending. Epilogue, William's home, 1916, in reality. Margaret completes the spell. The dream is over and Nightingale wakes. In a bedroom of her family's estate. <laughs> My god, she's awake. Three months later. I'm all hobbled. Uh, I guess it's because I'm learning to walk again. Thank Gail. I knelt to the floor and wept with joy when I learned that you had awoken. To have my darling girl back after all these years now, a woman, the doctors inform me you are able to walk again. I am immensely proud. I am to take a leave from the front in October and will be by your side again. Love, Father. Nightingale, the car is ready. The woman at Monston House said to be there before dinner, so I'll have to get going. Nightingale is driven to Monston House. From a distance, you can see it, it is a flame. Oh, it's the nurse and those guys. Oh, Nightingale, you made it. It's so wonderful to see you walking. I can only imagine how difficult it has been. Stuck in a bed for over 20 years, I'd rather be in the trenches. We all have our crosses to bear. I suppose you've noticed the mansion is on fire. It's the funniest thing. This afternoon, we received a letter from none other than Margaret Blackett. Instructed us to evacuate all patients. As soon as the last one was out, there was an explosion in the basement. It wasn't long until the flames had just spread to the rest of the house. We should all be glad to be free of it, I suppose. I'd like to invite you all to my home for dinner tonight. Not as great as Monson House. Well, thank Christ for that. Let's go. All right. I'm going to assume that was ending A, where we finally just wake from the dream, you know, we're fully awake. Alright, so we use some dream essence to make a pure cursed energy bean. Now it is alive, but still too weak to be of much use. A bit more dream essence should make it battle ready. Okay, so here's some more. Got eyeballs now. Look at his little hands. It's not quite an assassin yet, but it's ready to accompany you and learn. You can summon your son at any time. Again, it's creature of pure cursed energy, not her son. Summoning him has a price. Take the summoning knife and plunge it into your stomach. Your bouncing baby boy will be by your side at no time. It's fucking weird considering she's like 13 to 16 in this game, but whatever. Uh, when here in the church, it can continue to refine and strengthen the creature. Given that it is made of cursed energy, the creature cannot hold normal weapons. But with enough organ grease and body parts, you can craft a cursed arsenal for it. We also continue to add dream essence to strengthen it. I believe we'll come up with a plan for the creature, but it'll need to be a bit stronger. Okay. Uh... I don't really need to give it a weapon.
I'll just keep strengthening it. about as strong as I can make it. Tell us a plan when you're ready to hear it. All right, let's execute the plan. The creature is ready. The process should be quite simple. Bicar has located the 1874 iteration where I first met Peter after dying in the real world. Form a short ritual and the creature will be off to assassinate 1874 Priscilla. If it works, the past will have changed. Peter will never bring the idol to Monston House, but in reality, we'll have the opportunity to live properly. Except for me, since I'll already be dead, but I'm prepared to go ahead. All right. So the most likely outcome is that we all cease to exist instantly, and it's also possible to continue to live in a branch timeline. It depends on how reality is actually structured. This is, I think, the most important scientific experiment ever conducted. Godspeed, creature. Alright. Epilogue. Monston House, 1892. In reality, Peter Monston left the idol in Constantinople. The dream never came to Wales. Nightingale sent to Monston House by her father. Oh, I have my knife on me. Like, my actual... Running around with a knife. It's a very pretty dress. Hello, Nightingale. Hello, Peter. I have my fucking knife ready for your gut. I'm just kidding. My name is Peter. Welcome to Monston House. As your father probably explained to you, you'll be staying here for a few weeks. This place is of healing. There are a few others here, but I'm sure you'll find it and become good friends with. Before I introduce you around, please follow me to the back of the house. There's something I'd like you to see in the hedge bait. Alright. Father explained to me that you've been acting out. He explained that all this began after your mother died. This is the monument to my mother, Anne. After she died, my sister Priscilla and I were so desperate to see our mother again. We acted out, we did foolish things, we even tried magic. We do incantations in front of the mirror trying to see her one last time, but magic isn't real. Priscilla and I thought we had found real magic in Constantinople, but it was just a dream. Lost my father and my sister on that trip. Coming back to Monston House alone, I was devastated, but I knew there was no magical solution to my grief. I'd like to earn your trust, Nightingale, so I can share with you all that I've learned. There are some troubled girls like yourself who are looking forward to meeting you. I'll introduce you to Becca, Emma, and Millie. Ah, oh, okay. And that's that. I guess that's the uh, considered true ending. But all right, that's all the endings and that is the end to a beautiful game. Hope you guys take care, stay awesome, and I'll catch you guys in the next one, I guess.